got to ask you the ridiculous question. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have dinosaurs here on Earth today. Yep. They're birds. Yep. Um, 10 and a half, 11,000 species of dinosaur. Are birds dinosaurs? Yes. Yeah, isn't that it, it's, it's wild? It's just a yes. Yeah, it's... How many people know this, by the way? So there's, there's an interesting one. I did a radio show, oh, it's probably seven or eight years ago now, with a couple of, you know, drive time afternoon, nothing serious, nothing science or anything like that. And I mentioned something like this. And one presenter was, oh my God, what do you mean birds are dinosaurs? And the other one is, what do you mean you don't know birds are dinosaurs? So it's hitting that tipping point of common knowledge, I think, where... No, does does does, does everyone know? But no, but I think an awful lot of people know and are now kind of used to it as an idea. So, what's evolutionary the connection between birds and dinosaurs? The, I mean, they literally are in the same way that we are apes and mammals. Birds are dinosaurs. The direct, if you trace back the evolution of all the birds, so hummingbirds and albatross and ostrich and kiwi and parrots and pelicans and penguins and whatever else, and take them down to their ancestral point and then go back quite a few more million years, the nearest relative to them is a dinosaur. It is actually something very close to Velociraptor, um, or at least a small version of Velociraptor. So they birds have literally descended from dinosaurs, therefore they are dinosaurs. We have literally descended from other apes, we are apes. It, it is that form of evolutionary connection throughout that whole process did they have feathers or did feathers come and go so fe feathers are in tyrannosaurs so feather feathers go back at least so ironically because the fossil record is very incomplete um most of the things that are closest to birds we know from the early and late cretaceous so the last kind of 50 million years of dinosaur evolution up to the extinction and Actually, birds almost certainly go back another 50 million years. So birds did not appear as a result of the dinosaurs going extinct. Birds lived alongside the dinosaurs for a hundred million years. This was this is the bird, birds were not new on the scene, and it's all like, oh, the dinosaurs died, and from the ashes rose the bird. No, they've been knocking around forever. They just survived because they're small. In a very large part, yeah. That's that's almost certainly what really helped them. Um but birds took a kicking in the Kate extinction. So did mammals. Loads of bird lineages went extinct and only a handful got over the line, but they did. But yeah, we have feathers in, as I said, we've got middle Jurassic tyrannosaurs that are 165 million years old. So 100 million years before the extinction that have feathers. Simple feathers, they'd be like those you get on most baby chicks. So they're not with the big kind of classic pick up a feather in you know in the street or on a field of the, the big vein up the middle and then the kind of paired flat pieces um this would be much more like a hair but we have them we've got something which is very close to a bird but might not quite be a bird with modern but with modern feathers um in the middle jurassic we've got definitive stuff like archaeopteryx in the late jurassic and then into the early cretaceous we have a series of fossil beds in china which are just heaving with them so yeah, and there's Tyrannosaurs have feathers, Velociraptor and the Dromaeosaurs had feathers, Truodontids had feathers, um, Ornithomimosaurs we've mentioned, they had feathers, and so did a whole bunch of other groups as well. There's about eight or nine kind of major groups, kind of the size of something like, yeah, literally like carnivores or um, deer, you know, some massive groups, about eight or nine of them were fully feathered as far as we can tell so feathers massively predate bird origins but it was a major part of their evolution do i understand why feathers evolved with the function the the the, the sexual yeah, selection it, it, the signal it's yeah it's probably a, a fundamental twofold one which is feathers insulate you they keep you warm and most dinosaurs were it's an archaic term but it's what most people know warm-blooded so they were much more like us and birds they had a stable high body temperature regardless of the environmental conditions and so if you're burning a lot of calories to stay warm, you want to kind of keep that heat and feathers really help you do that. And then the other thing is, yeah, the obvious thing is sexual selection and communication. Feathers do stuff that scales can't. You can shed them in winter and change color and come back as another one. That's quite a handy trick. Um, you can change them between juveniles and adults. So baby birds have one type of feather, adults have a different one. We know of dinosaurs that do that. Well, we've got adults and juveniles with different feather types. 
types preserved in the fossils. Um, yeah, you can produce all kinds of weird colors and displays. You can you can erect feathers. You can hold them up and fan them out like a peacock or a pheasant. Whereas scales, you can't really do that a bit, or you need a huge amount of bone, like Protoceratops. So there's two good reasons that they would probably evolve and exactly pulling them apart or which is more important and again they're, they're they're probably bifunctional as soon as you start making feathers and making them more colorful well you're staying warmer so that's an advantage or as soon as you start making feathers to make them warmer it probably won't be long until someone evolves them to be a bit brighter red and then we're back to oh my god red <laughs> right but but that's what's happening and then yeah. they're gonna they're probably gonna push each other potentially i mean it is true that the birds went real crazy with the feather and the colors yeah, and the prettiness yeah, yeah, and all that. Yeah, they absolutely do. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's something about feathers that allows for that efficient sort of uh, diversification I, I think, of fashion. I, I think, yeah, I think it gives them opportunities that yeah. that scales and solid structures simply don't. I mean, yeah, you, 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 the, the sole ability. I mean, I say like you know peacocks and pheasants they are at a massive disadvantage to the males when they've got these extra plumes on them because they're so big and heavy peacocks can barely fly but the fact is you can still kind of fold them up into a fairly neat package and kind of hide if you really wanted to whereas if you're something like triceratops that billboard on the stuck of you on the top of your head is not only enormous but also bone it's massive it's heavy and you've got to no lug it around the whole year whereas peacocks at least can go well all the girls have settled down on their nests now i'm just going to get rid of all this extra weight and dump it 